Um, I've been asked to perhaps say a few things about the qualities of humanitarian, you know, the, the leader in the humanitarian sector requires. And, uh, and I do agree entirely with, with John that actually you know, it's very important to think beyond individual leadership skills, but I still think that, it, that you know, individuals will still need a range of qualities to enable the other forms of leadership that you've talked about. And so I've jotted down um, perhaps six qualities and one requirement, um, if you bear with me. And the requirement, which for me is you know, the, the first and foremost requirement on any person that wants to exercise leadership in humanitarian context is the knowledge of the normative framework, is the knowledge of IHL, of international humanitarian um, law. I think without that, a leader is automatically disempowered from understanding how to engage with uh, um, the parties of a conflict with belligerents on both sides, with the state, um, as well as the armed non-state actors. You know, HL provides that leader with the ability you know, of uh, taking decisions that perhaps you know, he, would he or she would find difficulty to, um, difficult to, um, to take. But this is you know, just the general requirement. There are, I think, a set of you know, specific qualities that would be important at any level of leadership in, in the sector. And the first, and, and uh, I think Ben has already kind of hinted to, is the political acumen. Humanitarian crises are inherently political. You know, the cr especially if we're talking of a conflict um, situation, but generally crisis where there are power relations at stake. And, and it's essential for a leader to be able to understand that, to navigate the politics of a crisis. Um, this means you know, being able to carry a political economy analysis of the stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? What are their interests? What are they trying to achieve? How can I engage with them? Um, it's about the cultural speci specificity of a context, knowing what the context you, you're working in is, what are the their cultural um, boundaries, what are their values, what are you know, the ways in which people uh, do things. And you know, especially if there is a conflict, understanding the history of that particular conflict, you know, which is uh, important in shaping you know, the, the, the current reality. Um, so the second quality um, is the diplomatic skills. Once you've figured out what the politics are, you also need to be able to engage with the different stakeholders. And you need to, to know, you know that different people will need, different actor, sets of actors will need different modes of engagement. And so you know, honing <laughs> on those diplomatic skills is quite important. Um, Further and very importantly, you need to be a consensus builder. And um, I think my, my predecessors have already hinted to that. You need to, to generate, to be able to generate a shared vision around what you're trying to accomplish. Now, something that we hear often um, you know, as a pushback in the sector is but you need to take decisions fast. You know, it's a crisis, you need to decide fast. Fine, decide fast, but then build consensus about the decision you've made afterwards. You need to make sure that people are with you, understand why a certain decision has been made you know, on, um, sort of in, in the heat of the moment. Um, if I can just quickly mention the other three. Um, you need to be a team builder, an enabler. You, know, you need to make sure that you can work um, with your people and enabling them, you know, to um, to act. So a facilitator, you know, the adaptive capacity that Ben has, has referred to. Um, fifth, you need to be a networker. At different levels, you need to, you know, be able to to operate at different levels, understand, uh, broaden, you know, the scope of partners that you'll take on board and uh, and your allies. And very finally, <laughs> you need to be willing to take risks. Um, that's something that is really hampering the, the sector, where people more and more you know, shy away from taking risks, both vis-a-vis -vis their organizations and the context which they operate. So Thank you very much. Right, Claire, your three minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, sorry. 